Okay, so, um, and so, okay, so we, so we see what the wave functions are. The wave functions are exponentially, or exponential functions, not oscillatory functions, okay? Um, by the way, uh, just I wanted to say also that we, we if you remember when the step potential, we eliminated the exponentially growing uh, solution, the, the e to the plus alpha x solution, because, uh, because the potential energy for x was for x greater than zero was uh, was a constant u naught, it never changed, and so basically when x was as we'd go to bigger and bigger x, um, this uh, solution would just get bigger and bigger and basically go to infinity and therefore basically it would diverge, and so that's not physical. But in this case it is okay. We have to keep this this solution because the potential barrier is only of a finite width and so this we're not going to uh, uh, the solution is never going to get to infinity unless we take the limit where the potential barrier width is infinitely wide okay all right so we see what the exp we see what the solutions are the wave function solutions now let's uh, let's calculate um, the reflection and transmission coefficients well we're not going to calculate them but I'm going to give it to you um, when um, when let's so let's calculate r and t when the energy is less than the potential height okay so in order to to see how you would do this in a reasonably simple way we realize that we we can replace e uh, wherever we see e minus u naught in the reflection the, the, the general reflection and transmission coefficients um, that we wrote <clears throat> uh, back here Back here, we have the reflection and transmission coefficients. Here we've kept them in terms of k1 and k2, but we could write them, because k1 and k2 are functions of e and u naught, we could write them as a function of e and u naught. And if we do that, and then we replace, um, wherever we see e minus u naught, we replace that with a u naught minus e. And at the same time that we do that, it implies that we've multiplied by negative one. And so if you take sine, uh, if you take a sine of, of uh, I times something, then you're going to get um, uh, a hyperbolic sine. So we would re want to also replace the sine squared, anywhere we see a sine squared of K2L, we would want to replace that with a hyperbolic sine, the sinh squared of alpha L. And again, we've gone from K2 to alpha, okay? So, <clears throat> so um, uh, that's how you, that's a sort of a if you start from the general solution, the general reflection and transmission coefficients, which I gave you, the general expressions for the reflection and transmission coefficients, which I gave you a few slides ago, that's one way to um, to get to the uh, to the solutions for the case when uh, the energy is less than u naught. And what we find for the transmission coefficient is is this right here. Okay, so we get um, <coughs> one plus the hyperbolic sine squared of alpha L divided by 4 times the ratio of the energy divided by U naught. Remember, at E over U naught is actually, this is less than 1, this is less than 1. So this, um, um, uh, uh, this denominator here, uh, for example, for E is, is, for E over U naught is equal to a half, this denominator will be equal to 1. Okay, so it's on order of 1 for many, for many situations. Okay, um, and then we have the cinch square, and then this whole quantity is uh, inverted. Okay, so this is all to the minus one. So I just just give you an idea of what this actually looks like because I don't um, at least uh, many of you may not be familiar with the uh, hyperbolic sine function. So I've plotted here the hyperbolic sine function squared of x as a function of x. Okay, so on the on the, uh, the bottom uh, the horizontal axis here we have x. Um, and uh, I've just plotted over two different ranges. So here, two different ranges. So here I'm going from x equals 0 to 2. And we see that between x equals 0 and 1, it's reasonably linear. Okay, but then it starts to become divergent. And if we even just go out to x equals 10, we see that we're getting incredibly large numbers. Look at this. This is 5 times 10 to the 7th. This is 2.5 times 10 to the 8th compared to the numbers that are exist between uh, zero and two, so it gets big very fast. Once you get once once x is greater than one, or once alpha l in our case is greater than one, it diverges very very fast. 